So now we'll tackle the header and we have a few other things to update as well. At the moment, none of these links really go anywhere. So we can, first of all, look at how we show sign up and sign in if we're not signed in. And then of course, we'll show the user's name once they are signed in. So we can also go back and update our auth method to return the currently authenticated user. This makes it easy to do things like this. So let's head over to that partial that we created earlier on in the series. So remember it's under resources, templates, partials, navigation. So the first thing that we're going to do is just look at the difference between these two links and then this entire drop down. So we know that if uh, we are signed in, we want to show this drop down. Otherwise, we want to show these two. But we have no way of checking if the user is actually signed in. So over in our auth class, we need some kind of check method. So let's just create a method here called check. And here, how do we know if a user is authenticated? Well, for now, we can return is set dollar underscore session user. So if that's set, we know that a user can't set that themselves because sessions are stored on our server. So we know that they must be signed in. So what we can also do while we're here is create a method to grab the currently signed in user. Now we know the user's ID here. So all we need to do is return user find dollar underscore session user. That would just grab that record, return the first or only record and we're done. So now that we've got this, we can go ahead and use this in here to basically check if the user is signed in. But what happens when we try to use auth.check say, well, where's auth coming from? We don't have it within our templates. And that's where we need to again make this a global variable. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to our app and just for now, I guess you could change this later. You could set this into middleware if you wanted to, but we're going to set this in here. So we're going to add this as a global. So all we do is say view get environment again, add global, and we're going to add auth to this. And this is going to be container auth. So what we need to do is just pull our auth just up here and we're done. So now we're going to have this auth class available inside of our templates. Now we'll come back and change this in just a moment. The reason being is that if we were to in multiple places use auth.user, what that's going to do is it's going to keep creating SQL, it's going to keep performing SQL queries. So in actual fact, what we can do here is we can say something like, if we just get rid of this, we could say auth check, and we can paste this back in. We can use the check method there. So this will be a true or false value. And what we could also do is say user, and then here we can pull the user. So what we are essentially doing here is we are calling the database once, but we're storing that user inside of our view variables. That means we can use them in our templates. Therefore, we're only doing it once. So we're just saying auth.user, that will just always be that user. So it's these kind of subtle things where you might create it, not realize how many SQL queries you are actually performing. So it's really important to kind of tie this up at the start. So let's just test this out then. So over in our navigation, we know that we want the drop down to display only when a user is signed in. So we want an if statement here, if auth.check. And then here we can have an else. And then here we'll just end that if statement. So now if we just indent this, we should see, because remember I authenticated earlier, and of course I've spelled environment wrong again. So environment, there we go. So now that we're signed in, we can see this drop down. We can't see the sign in and sign up because it doesn't make sense. So let's just head over to resources, over to cookies. We'll just get rid of the PHP session. And now we're back to the state where we have sign up and sign in.
So let's just tie up these links very, very quickly, and then we'll be good to move on. So for sign up, we know that this is path for auth.sign up, and we can copy this, pop that in there, and it's auth.sign in. Uh, we don't have sign out, we don't have change password at the moment, but of course we don't want this to keep displaying my cat's name. So what we want to do is say auth.user, which remember we are making a request to, we're storing that in our global uh, views or our global twig instance. And then we're gonna say dot name. So this is the user's name. So this is the property from the database. This is the user. And of course, this is the thing that we've attached to our views. So now if I go and sign in, let's just pull this down. We should see my name. Perfect. So easy as that. So let's just tie up the couple of other links that we have. We've got the home link here, which of course you can get rid of or create other pages. Pretty straightforward now. And this is just home. And of course we want the same for the logo here as well. So now we can click home to go back home. And of course, wherever we wanna go. So there we go. We've tidied up our navigation bar. So we have that state set now, whether we're signed in or signed out.